Hello, this is Robert Whitaker with Epica Animal Health. Uh, today I want to talk about, you know, how we can achieve organic growth uh, in veterinary practices using diagnostic imaging. I've been in the veterinary world for 25 years now, and everything I've done in my career has been centered around uh, imaging in animals, animal imaging. So uh, I've taken this uh, expertise that I've gained uh, and been able to apply it in large animal and in also in small animal. I've worked for VCA, Sound, Patterson Veterinary, also worked for a veterinary specialist uh, group called Vital Rads where we were a group of radiologists providing radiology overreads for, for veterinarians all over the globe. Uh, today I work for Animal Health, Epica Animal Health in uh, South Carolina. We're based out of South Carolina. We've been in business since 2013. We've got 34 patents on a machine uh, called the Vimigo and the Vimigo Pico. So today I'm going to take you through uh, how we can utilize this technology in any animal hospital out there. And, you know, most animal hospitals have more than, than one veterinarian. Uh, so, you know, most of the time our installs are in two to three veterinarian practices. In other cases, of course, multiple veterinarians, seven, eight, 10, 12 or more. But most of our installs are in practices that are two to three uh, veterinarians. So, you know, when we look at what this machine is capable of, um, we'll talk about what it's capable of from a practical perspective. It's capable of increasing doctor competence. It's capable of increasing your client's satisfaction with the services that you're providing in an animal hospital. And it's also very capable of increasing the EBITDA in an animal hospital's, you know, increasing the bottom line. So we're going to get through how this happens. Uh, Epica created HDVI, Vimigo HDVI, for use in small animal, avian, and exotics patients. So this machine can see anything up to 200, you know, we're going to scan anything up to 200 pounds or anything as small as a mouse. So we can go from a mouse to a mastiff, essentially, in patient size. And like I said earlier, it's got 34 patents that are separating this technology from everything else that's out there in the world today when it comes to advanced imaging systems for veterinarians. So, some key points that you need to take away today are the Vimigo rapidly captures 1400 2D images from 360 degrees around the patient and then the system reconstructs those 1400 plus images into a 3D volumetric imaging study. And unlike traditional CT imaging, Vimigo can capture the entire volume of your patient, the entire volume. Um, if you look at traditional CT, it uses slices. So there's gaps in between these slices. So you're not getting the entire volume of, of the patient. Um, HDVI allows us to examine all of these complex anatomical structures inside of a patient. And we can do this using uh, our regular image review software, voxel view, but we can also do this in virtual reality and augmented reality applications or environments. Um, so this has the ability to produce, you know, all kinds of enhancements in, in, in research and in vet medicine. In the medical field, uh, Vimigo HDVI is revolutionizing diagnostics, surgical planning, patient education, education of vet students. Um, we're enabling physicians to explore 
3D views of organs, tissues, abnormalities, giving us a more accurate diagnosis, giving us the ability to plan treatment better. And I'll show you some cases uh, further into this presentation of what that looks like. So looking at the machine itself, 50% less radiation compared to traditional CT. Um, no interpolation, meaning we're capturing 100% of the volume of the patient. In other words, uh, there's, there's no gaps in the data set. It's all 100% solid whole data from the patient. It's portable. We can move it from room to room as long as there's a power supply for it uh, in the other room. It has three modalities on board. So it does HDVI CT scans. It does fluoroscopy. It also does digital radiography. And it has a very high resolution. We can see uh, down to the thickness of a human hair in these 3D studies. And we're going to see both bone and soft tissue with this machine. This is what our voxel view software looks like. So when you review a study that we do on a patient, this is what you see on the screen. You'll have a 3D rendering on the screen and then you'll have those 2D renderings also. So we can see in the top right uh, box that that is what we call the axial view. That is the traditional CT view. The other two views below are, if we were looking at radiographs, we would call these lateral or coronal views. The lateral view would translate more or less into sagittal for CT, and the uh, coronal there at the bottom is, um, you know, what we would say in radiographs would be ventrodorsal or dorsal ventral, depending on what side of the patient you were looking down through. Um, we can look at any orientation of this patient in 3D and it's going to take us exactly where we are in all of the views simultaneously. We can see all the bone and all the soft tissue simultaneously or we can select for just bone or just soft tissue or just vascular. So how do we compare this to radiographs? Well, we're missing things in radiographs. It's just human nature. You know, radiologists, I've worked with them for a few years. They miss stuff too, even though they're highly trained. And it's really not the fault of the human as much as it may be the fault of the technology itself. You know, so here's a, here's a case of uh, an eight-year-old Rottweiler that came in that couldn't urinate. Um, they took rads by a GP and they couldn't see anything. They couldn't figure it out. They referred it down the road to a specialist. They took rads also. So we got a lateral view from a specialist. We got a lateral view here uh, from, from the uh, original hospital. Uh, they spent $1,300 getting no answers uh, between two hospitals. So essentially, uh, they had a Vimigo in the specialist hospital and they ran it through there. And uh, they found in the urethra, there were stones. So you can see that as uh, the software moves, or is manipulated to move through the, uh, each of the views. This is the 3D view of those stones in the urethra. Here's another case of a nine-month-old Great Dane. Uh, this Great Dane was completely down in its front end. And they were thinking immediately, since it was a Great Dane, that it had Wobbler's disease. But they went ahead and took radiographs to the shoulders. And they see what may be uh, some type of OCD, but it's very... Uh, it's just not defined very well in, in the radiographs, let's say. So it goes on over to a uh, specialty practice where a neurologist uh, uses her Vimigo at this specific uh, specialist practice. And she looks at the neck. Um, everything indicates that this is not wobblers from this scan. 
But when the surgeon comes in and says, hey, scan the shoulders, they find that the radiographs were really underrepresenting the OCD that this animal really did have. So we have a lot of degeneration going on. And you can see the growth plates are still open in this animal. Here's the other one. This is the other shoulder in 2D. And then here is the 3D rendering of one of the shoulders. And when it gets around here, I'll stop it. You can actually see through it. You can see through it right there. Okay, this is not a good prognosis for a nine month old Great Dane. But nonetheless, the Vimigo saw it, the radiographs did not. Um, we have a nine year old uh, female spade canine that presents with quite a bit of pain in the neck and back. Again, uh, radiographs were captured, lateral VD. And we're looking uh, in those areas that there, there's pain. You could touch this dog. You could you could touch this dog's back, and it would it would uh, yelp. It was so painful. What we're seeing here in this lateral chest view here, there's definitely something going on in the lungs. Um, but this is there's nothing in this radiograph that's explaining to us uh, this pain that the animal that the patient's experiencing. So the Vimigo is used to scan. Well, the first thing we see are all of these nodules throughout the lungs. Now we did, uh, if we peek back to the radiographs, you know, we were seeing, you know, definitely uh, what seems to be quite a bit of an abnormal lung there. Um, just not getting a whole lot of detail out of it. But when we look at it in the Vimigos images, uh, we're seeing a lot of detail. And then we also can see that the lymph nodes are, are definitely uh, enlarged. That's a clue. So we can see lymph nodes. We're using contrast imaging, by the way, in this patient where we used intravenous contrast of omnipec or iohexol. And then we get down to the real, real problem in the spine where we see all of these lesions in the vertebra where there's deterioration of the vertebra itself. You can see it here in 3D, you can see it up here in 2D. Um, massive degeneration or degradation of the vertebra. Um, you know, huge lesions that we can see in, in all uh, the region of the spine. Not a good prognosis at all. Again, in 3D, lesions here and here. And then again, in 3D, we can see the lymph nodes. So um, what about conventional CT? When we look at, you know, this technology with this uh, HGVI CT stacked up against conventional or traditional CT. Well, with traditional CT, we've got limited resolution. You know, we see bone really well. It'll see soft tissue really well, too, with contrast, uh, but not as well as what we're seeing with the Vimigo. Very high radiation. Um, we, we don't get to move a CT around. Uh, it's living in one room all the time, no matter what. We could move uh, the Vimigo into another room if we had power for it. Uh, in the other room because it has wheels and it goes through, you know, regular sized doors. Um, the infrastructure required to put in a traditional CT is uh, more than what you would need to put in a Vimigo. Uh, you're going to need 480 volt electricity source. Um, sometimes that means bringing a whole new uh, electrical line to, to a vet clinic, which costs a lot of money, uh, with a new transformer, etc. cetera. Um, with the Vimigo, most of the uh, clinics are already wired for 220. We're using a 220 connection uh, that plugs into the wall. Also, uh, some states are gonna require lead lining 
whether you buy um, a CT traditional or an HDVI CT. Other states are going to differentiate since the HDVI CT from Vimigo is 50% less than traditional CT. Uh, they may not require um, shielding or lead lining uh, in a room. So, you know, that's dependable on, on, on what uh, the state uh, regulations are. So when we look at a traditional CT capture, you know, here's a good example of a 64 slice Toshiba um, by AMC in New York on a, on a patient. Now, when we look at the axial view in the far left, um, it's very clear. We look at the coronal and sagittal views, center and right, respectively, and those are very blurry. This is because we're trying to bridge the gaps between the slices with data that doesn't exist. That's called interpolation. Here's another example from a different patient on the same 64 slice machine. Again, very clear in the axial view, not clear in the coronal and sagittal views. Now, when we take the Vimigo and do the same thing, same study over the kidneys, we have much clearer views in all three lateralities. Axial, coronal, and sagittal views are all very clear, very defined, with no blurriness, because we're capturing the entire volume of the patient. There's no gaps that our software is trying to fill in with false information. Here's a, here's a different patient here, same thing. Actually, same patient, late phase renal imaging. So a little longer for the uh, uh, contrast to get through uh, the kidneys. Again, look at the detail that you're getting in all three views. And I'll back up just for comparison. Very, very stark difference in resolution. This is a half million dollar machine. The Vimigo doesn't cost half a million dollars. It costs much less. So when we look at challenges uh, with ultrasound, you know, what are our challenges with ultrasound as a technology? We know that we can see soft tissue really, really well with ultrasound. And we use ultrasound every day in a lot of veterinary practices multiple times a day. But what are its limitations? Well, it's user dependent. So if you have someone that's inexperienced with ultrasound, you're not going to get any really good result out of it. Um, imaging through gas is a huge challenge with, with ultrasound. There's a high learning curve associated with ultrasound. And when you try to show the images from an ultrasound scan of a liver, um, spleen, small bowel, stomach, etc., anything in the internal medicine realm, we're trying to show images to our client. The client doesn't really interpret those images well. They, they're nonsensical. So um, adrenal glands are always the... Uh, the end all be all with ultrasound scans. You know, you consider yourself a really good sonographer in the veterinary world if you can capture adrenals, you know, on any given patient. Well, we capture adrenals every single scan that we're using uh, contrast on. We light those adrenals up. We can see them clearly. You know, this is, you know, in less than five minutes to get this data on the screen. And I've seen people take 20 and 30 minutes to find both adrenals with ultrasound in some patients because of challenges with gas or challenges with, you know, the experience of the sonographer, et cetera. So as an example, you know, we're able to capture the entire abdomen in very, very high detail. We can capture a lot of detail in the abdomen with ultrasound as well. Not putting ultrasound down, it's a very valuable technology that we've used for years. But when you look at the ability to come on and off the table in under 10 minutes with a CT scan from a Vimigo, 
uh, in full 3D and we're only getting 2D images and we're taking 30 and 45 minutes to do an ultrasound. It's almost a no-brainer. Now, does that mean we'll never use ultrasound again if we buy Vimigo? No, it doesn't mean that at all. Of course, we're going to use ultrasound. Um, we may, you know, the ultrasound may be leading us to the Vimigo more often than we think. Uh, just like the radiographs, we're not going to quit using those either. Those are going to probably lead us to using the Vimigo more often uh, rather than less. Well, what about MRI? Well, MRI is pretty hard to beat when it comes to brains. When you look at uh, the brain in a dog that's having neurological symptoms, you know, we can see any kind of a mass with MRI in a dog. This is where we differ with uh, MRI and, and Vimigo is in the brain. Uh, the, the MRI sees it all. We may only see 80% of the masses that are out there, the brain masses that are out there with Vimigo, simply because, you know, contrast is what we use to light up the blood supply when we do a CT image. Um, only about 80% of the tumors that we see in dogs and cats in brains are going to be lit up by contrast. The others may not be lit up by contrast or will not be lit up by contrast and then we can't see them well. We may be able to see what the mass does, what's called a mass effect, where it pushes the midline of the brain over in the image or something like that. It's not a definitive uh, diagnosis like what we can get from MRI. But the problem with MRI is it takes us 45 minutes in a lot of cases to get a really good capture. What's great about Vimigo is it takes us less than 10 minutes on and off the table using contrast to get a really good capture of a brain. We're giving up the ability to see those tumors that don't have a blood supply, but most do have a blood supply. So when we look at spines, again, MRI extremely accurate with spines. We can see lesions very easily uh, with MRI. However, it takes 45 minutes. It takes a long time. On and off the table in less than 10 minutes. And in a lot of cases, we're not going to use contrast and we can see mineralized disc material very easily. Now, we are going to be told by radiologists again and again to always do a myelogram. You know, that's contrast in the uh, in spine so that we can identify any places where there isn't mineralized disc material, but there is compression or extrusion. But again, much faster with as good a resolution as you could ask for. Stifles in dogs. We can see all of the soft tissue structures in a dog stifle with MRI. Wanna wait 30 minutes? Sure. On and off the table in less than 10 minutes using contrast inside the joint. This is called an arthrogram. We can do the same. We can see the meniscus. We can see uh, the cruciates and whether or not they're intact. So let's talk about fluoroscopy. We have the ability to look live. It's an x-ray technology at an animal swallowing, or an animal coughing, or an animal breathing. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a swallowing issue with a cat that cannot swallow its food unless it turns its head one way. So you'll see here in just a second, the cat turns its head, and the stricture's relieved, and it can go ahead and swallow the, the food on down. Without this fluoro study, um, a veterinarian would not have been able to really diagnose where this stricture is, that there is a stricture, etc. So we have a lot of applications with fluoroscopy, uh, swallowing, uh, coughing, of course respiratory, to, you know, when we, when we have an animal in respiratory distress, um, it may be easier to just let them stand up in the field of view with the fluoro on. Uh, rather than stressing the animal more and holding it down trying to get a radiograph. 
collapsing tracheas are very uh, common use with the fluoro on this machine. We have a lot of folks that are using tracheal stents uh, that like to use Vimigo and the fluoro uh, to place those stents. And then of course angiography. So if you want to look for shunts or anything like that, we can look for shunts with CT. We can also look for shunts with fluoroscopy, but both of them are going to require contrast imaging. Orthopedics, very, very common use. Um, you know, we can see all kinds of anomalies in joints, uh, degenerative joint disease, arthritis, etc. It's very visible uh, with the Vimigo. Uh, we're seeing it in 3D. Gives us a better uh, understanding of what's going on in the animal and how severe uh, the disease may be. So it helps us increase the compliance with our clients out there. Diseased elbows. When we have coronary process fractures and fragments floating around and things like this, everyone loves to take radiographs of elbows. You know, it takes you 30 minutes to get really good radiographs of elbows on dogs but we'll get both elbows at once in a CT scan on and off the table in less than 10 minutes with the Vimigo. Plus, we're going to have 3D and be able to see things very easily. And again, be able to educate our client and show them exactly what's going on and why it's going to cost what it costs to treat the animal. Spines. Whether it's a cervical spine or, or lumbar spine, you've already seen the value of, of spinal studies previously. But again, uh, very easy for us to see things going on in the spine. Dentistry. So using oral radiographs can be very cumbersome if, you know, you have um, dogs that are like pugs or, or even kitties. Um, you know, or they're harder to get oral radiographs from than, let's say, a Labrador uh, that has a longer snout and, and we have more room to work. But again, you know, oral radiographs can take us 20 minutes, can take us 30 minutes. We're on and off the table in less than five minutes for a dentistry scan and we're seeing everything in 3D. Uh, also, again, able to really educate our clients on what's happened. We can send a text uh, with, you know, an image of, uh, of the dentistry scan that we've done and get approvals uh, almost immediately, you know, to do extractions, et cetera, uh, using um, Vemigo for dentistry scans. So we can see every single root in the skull. We can see everything in every arcade, um, upper and lower. And, of course, uh, we're going to see the diseased teeth before, uh, you know, we even know they're diseased in a lot of cases. Uh, back to brain tumors. Here we are. This is a brain tumor. Uh, it's actually a pituitary tumor in a dog. Um, we have otitis externa, otitis media diagnosis with, uh, with this technology. Much better, much more accurate than what we're seeing with video otoscopes. And then, of course, when was the last time you saw, uh, you know, enlarged zygomatic glands that were bilateral, by the way? Um, we can see all kinds of things, especially when we're using contrast um, that's going on in, in the skull. In fact, the most common anatomy scanned by Vimigo in any practice is the skull because of dentistry and because of ears and because of, of nasal passages. So here's our voxel view software again. Uh, this is how we review images. We have the 3D image on the screen, and we also have all three 2D views on the screen. And wherever I move in one, the other three move with it, no matter what. Pretty cool, huh? Again, this can be screenshotted using this little camera icon up here in the top right corner of the software app. We can save that. We can put that on a USB stick and send it home. We can also, you know, transfer it to uh, the patient file. 
Now, Vmersion is what we use as our virtual reality application. So this is a separate purchase with the Vimigo. It doesn't come with it. Um, essentially, it's a virtual reality setup that's computer goggles, sticks, the whole mess, where you can upload any study in DICOM format and then start moving into the anatomy of the animal, like a fantastic journey, so to speak. And you can mark and map and surgically plan and educate with it. It is a fantastic technology. It's great for entertainment purposes, but it's also great for research. It's also great for diagnostics. I'll speed this up and I'll take you into another application. This is a research application. Again, let's see. There's a brain tumor in this dog here. We're going to expose it right there. And one more thing. The anatomy of a hummingbird. Now, I told you we could do very small patients. This is a very small patient. This hummingbird's been infused. It's, uh, this hummingbird is, is, is a cadaver, and it's been infused with bright view contrast. So researchers can see every single capillary, every single vein, every single artery in hummingbird anatomy. Vimersion has helped researchers in universities identify new anatomy that we didn't know was there in all kinds of species. Okay, so we've got this complicated imaging technology. Who's going to read the images? Peregrine Radiology is our sister company here at Epica. We have our own group of radiologists, veterinary board certified radiologists, who produce reports for our clients on a daily basis. Turnaround time on these is about 24 hours unless we select for, um, we select for a stat case, then of course we're under four hours at that point for stat. Uh, but they can look at any scan and get back uh, with you in a timely manner to give you their uh, indicators of what they think is going on, what they see, and then of course have pictures uh, to help educate you. So what we're doing here to deliver value is we want to provide the perception of the best care in our clients' minds. That separates us from everyone else in town. We're going to give clear, definitive answers on cases that radiographs and ultrasound may not be able to give us. Our clients are going to be able to see and understand what's going on in the anatomy of their pet. That's going to allow them to trust the doctors 100%. And of course, they can go home with stuff to show and tell to their friends and family. That's good for the practice because guess what? You will always get more people coming to a practice that has better technology that they know they're going to get answers. We want to use this primary imaging as often as possible. There's going to be times when we avoid x-ray and ultrasound one or the other or both and go straight to the CT. Dentistry is an example of this. Another example may be a hit by car situation. You know, if the animal's already sedate, we can go ahead and go in and do a full body scan and see what's going on head to tail. We can charge incrementally more than radiographs. Usually, a rule of thumb might be $250 more than radiographs. So if your radiograph charge is $300, you might be charging $550 for a scan of a single region. An example of a single region would be elbows or skull. Since it's a dentistry scan, then we would look at maybe $100 on a dentistry scan. But let's say that we did this three times a day. And we were charging $750 for, let's say, one region, six days a week. 
Um, that's about 19,000 a month. If we look at $100 for dentistry, we don't make this an option. It's what every single dentistry gets. We're doing 10 dentistries a week at $1,000. And then of course that's an extra 4,300 a month. So we're getting, you know, somewhere around 23, $24,000 a month in new revenue that we did not have before. So we look at radiologist overreads. That's usually a wash. We're going to pay uh, Peregrine Radiology, let's say $110 for, uh, you know, a single anatomy or a single region. 150, I think, for two regions, uh, and then we'll charge the client. You know, a markup on that. We'll get more definitive diagnoses than what we've ever had before. We're going to have greater client compliance than what we've ever had before, and we're also going to get some huge marketing benefits. Can you imagine putting some of these 3D images up on your clinic's Facebook page, their Instagram page, etc.? So we're gonna increase revenue. We're definitely gonna be increasing the EBITDA of the practice. We're going to deliver an increase in the equity for the uh, owners of the practice. So to achieve real organic growth in our veterinary hospitals, we have to begin with better medicine. We've gotta do that through the addition of a cutting edge technology uh, like Vimigo. We can't just go continually raising our prices on all of our services and expect that to be the best way to achieve organic growth in a practice is bottom line. So here's some things to remember. This is done with improved resolution. You know, where HDBI is offering higher resolution and deep detail compared to traditional CT, capturing the entire volume uh, of the patient, not just slices. We're reducing radiation exposure. You know, traditional CT, we're 50% less than traditional CT in radiation exposure. This is good for clients. This is good for, uh, for the patient itself. This is also good for our veterinary team. We're enhancing the accessibility and the workflow that goes on in a veterinary practice. Vimigo uh, can easily be integrated into the clinical workflow of a veterinary practice. We're going to facilitate a more efficient and coordinated approach to patient care, especially in dentistry, but also in orthopedics and internal medicine. For us to speed dentistry to such a, a pace now because we're not waiting for oral radiographs for 20 or 30 minutes, instead we're on and off the table in less than five you know, we may fit in an extra dentistry a day or maybe even extra two dentistries a day. Uh, cost effectiveness. You know, our traditional CT machines are, are more expensive to buy and operate and maintain. Uh, you can spend half a million dollars on a brand new traditional CT. Uh, in some cases, a used one will cost you two hundred fifty or $200,000, but then they hit you with that $40,000 a year service plan and warranty. That's far more expensive to operate than Vimigo. Vimigo offers a cost-effective solution. We're not going to compromise on image quality. We're going to be better than a traditional CT and we're going to offer a lot more profitability. So, you know, that's that's it. I know that there's probably questions. Um, you can send all of your questions to my email or you can give me a call on my cell phone. Uh, so write down my contact information here and I uh, look forward to uh, visiting and helping in any way that I can. Thank you and have a good day.